today on the request of Sunit Tigidi. And with the mercy of Gurudev, great mercy of Gurudev, I should hope, we'll continue reading Rema Bhakti Chandrika, uh, exactly where Suniti Jiti left off last time with verse 108. We'll be using the edition, of course, translated by Advaita Das and with commentary by Ananta Das Babaji Maharaj. It's a very big step from Bhagavad Gita to Prema Bhakti Chandrika. In Bhagavad Gita, the feeling, the mood of rasa is very reserved and very hidden and very subtle. And in Prema Bhakti Chandrika, it's right in front of us. It's carried directly on the body of Narottam Dastakur, the author of Prema Bhakti Chandrika. He is considered to be the embodiment of Prem, of divine love. And if there's a purpose for Prema Bhakti Chandrika, it's to show us what that love looks like. So there's no holding back. It's full gas in Prema Bhakti Chandrika when it comes to showing the way that love can fill our practice and love can fill the life of those who are touched and who touch um, Radhamon. So it's almost too close in a way. I, I had to really adjust my, my mood to be able to read nicely uh, Prema Bhakti Chandrika. You don't have to scratch so deep. It's really just uh, letting go a little bit more, and I hope I can encourage you to let go too when you're uh, when you're reading it. Um, Narottam Das Thakur was a very uh, special person. Um, he lived uh, at the same time as Mahaprabhu, though they never met in their physical forms. <laughs> they met in visions and dreams and in spiritual service in many ways and in many different times. Uh, but he was a 100% devotee of Mahaprabhu in Mahaprabhu's time, exactly when Mahaprabhu was doing his was doing his touring around the West Bengal and in, in India and Jagannath, Jagannath Puri. So very, very present in the mood of Mahaprabhu. And you can even say in a way that that um, that Narottam Das Thakur is completely in the mood, perfectly in the mood of Mahaprabhu. So even if we have very little, um, very little evidence of of what Mahaprabhu was doing, only secondhand evidence, really, from the biographies we know, we can almost live the mood again by reading this poem and the other poems of of. Uh, of uh, Naratam. There's a very nice story, maybe Suniti told it to you in, in the beginning, but it's if not, it's worth uh, repeating. Like I said, they never met Mahaprabhu and uh, and uh, Narottam Das uh, Thakur. But once when Mahaprabhu was touring around West Bengal, close to where Narottam lived, where close to where he grew up, close to the Padma River, which is the main river in, in West Bengal, and he bathed in the river, and he was dancing in ecstasy, and he spoke to the river, and he said, Oh, Pad Padmavati, oh, the river, take my love and hold it. Take my love, take my prem, and hold it, and keep it for Narottam. And when Narottam comes by next time and bathes here, please give it all to him. And the river is a little bit uh, frech, a little bit uh, sassy. And the river, Pad Pad Padmavati says, but okay, but how will I know it's him? How will I know it's Narottam? And Mahaprabhu answers him, well, you know it's Narottam because when he enters the water, it will overflow. The water will rise up over his feet and over the banks and it will overflow. So. As you might guess, Narottam, 12 years old, 
has a dream. In the dream, Nityananda appears, the companion of Mahaprabhu, the companion and guru of Mahaprabhu, and he says, Narottam, go and bathe in the Padmavati, go bathe in the river. And he does. So he goes and bathes in the river, and the river, Padmavati, remembers him because the water rises, and he remembers Mahaprabhu's words, and he gives Narottam the prema of Mahaprabhu that he's been saving for him. And so this is why we say that he is carrying and embodying the love that comes from Mahaprabhu. He's a complete and perfect expression of Mahaprabhu's love, passed along to him directly through the, the waters of the Padmati River in West uh, Bengal. And then maybe one last um, introduction remark to set the stage and also to remind us of the difference between Bhagavad Gita and Prema Bhakti Chandika. And what's really special about Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu's miraculous message to us is that essentially all religion all religious movements communicate through principles, through truths, through knowledge, through certainties. And when all these religious movements, even the largely Vaishnavism traditionally, when they're all talking in terms of principles, Gaudiya Vaishnavism and Mahaprabhu's followers, they think and experience in terms of emotion. So Gaudiya Vaishnavism, Mahaprabhu's followers are interested in beauty and feeling and what experiences make us feel and not the way we can describe them in words and books and texts and philosophy. It's uh, Mahaprabhu's message is an aesthetic one. The message is that truth about God can be felt, not known. And therefore, that feeling is a different kind of knowing than what we have in philosophy, than, we, than what we have in concepts and principles and certainties. And this means for us in everyday life, but also when we're reading a beautiful poem like Prema Bhakti Chandrika, it means that our research, Gurudev always says, do your research. It means that our research is in mood. Bhav. What is the mood of this poem, Prema Bhakti Chandrika? And how can I put myself, my heart, in a mood that harmonizes with it? That's our task. We all went through school trying to understand things with our brains, trying to understand the equation or the, or the law or the logic. And now our task is completely different. It's trying to feel what this poem is feeling, the mood that the poem is written in and that it contains, and to harmonize the mood of our bodies and our hearts and our minds in that way. And unfortunately, this is an extraordinary poem, very, very beautiful and very emotional. And really, in every turn, it has emotion. It talks about love. And it really lives up to the challenge that Mahaprabhu gave to uh, uh, Narottam Das Thakur to be Prem, to be the poet of Prem. I really think that's what he succeeds in doing. So we'll just do one verse today. That's the task I got from uh, Suniti, and, um, and I'll try to steer our mood into the mood of Prema Bhakti Chandrika. So we're on verse 108. Let me see.
And it goes like this. Jaya Jaya Radha Nama Vrindavana Yara Dhamma Krishna Sukha Vila Saranidhi Tena Radha Guna Gana Nasunilo Mora Kana Vanchita Kurila Mora Vidhi <coughs> And Advaita Das then translates the Bengali this way. Glory, glory to the holy name of Radha. Jaya Jaya Radha Nama. The holy name of Radha that resides in Vrindavan. And that is the ocean of Krishna's blissful pastimes. Fate has deprived me by not letting me hear the glorification of such Sri Radha. Jaya Jaya Radha Nama Vrindavana Yara Dhamma Krishna Rasu Kovila Serani Di Heno Radha Guna Gana Nasunilo Murakana Vanchita Kodila Mure Vidi So let's start by asking what the glory in the name is. This is really what Ananda Das Babaji is going to spend all the commentary asking. What does it mean to say that a name is holy? We can understand when someone says that God is holy. We can understand when someone says that Radha is holy. Then why don't we just say Jaya Jaya Radha? Glory, glory to Radha. But what we say in this verse is Jaya Jaya Radha Nama. We say glory, glory to the holy name of Radha or to the name of holy Radha. Well, to start, we remember what's often said in our readings and the teachings of Gurudev, that there's no difference between God and the name of God. This is the principle of Sankirtan. When we're singing the praises of God, we're making God present. This is the principle of Maha Mantra. When we're chanting Maha Mantra, we're making God present. But is that at the same time, it's, it's curious for us to think about a word being God. Is it the word that created the universe? Is it the word that, that killed uh, the monster Kamsa? Is it the word that living in Gauralila? What does the word do and how does the word take the place of God? Well, the answer lies in the fact that in bhakti, as we were saying right at the beginning, we want to know about feeling. We want, we want to have a, an experience of God, which... Yes, you know better. I have no idea about this. No, I'm a zero. Our relation to God is not one of knowledge and philosophy of logic. Our relation to God is one of feeling. So the question for us is how do words, how does the name of Radha bring feelings to us? And it's because that words, all words, but this word in particular, make a connection between our body and the divine. A word is a relation. A word is a connection. If I say the word tree, I connect through the vibrations coming from my body, from my lungs and from my breath and from my, from my vocal cords. I connect to the thing in the garden made of wood and leaves and, and flowers. 
A word is what connects the living breath of our body and therefore the living soul of the individual jiva to something that is bigger, something of which we are a part and parcel. So if I say the word radha, I connect the vibrations in my body, the vibrations pushed out of my body by my soul to the heart of God. By speaking the word Radha, I touch the divine part of me. That part and parcel of Radha that's in me. Because it's the part and parcel of Radha that's in me that's saying the word, that's making the word happen. That's making the energy inside my soul push the air out of my lungs and across my vocal cords and make meaningful word come out. It's the soul in me, the part and parcel of Radha, which is connecting to Radha, the, the, the goddess, the goddess of love. And like I said, Ananda Das Babaji in his commentary doesn't talk about very much else than the way, the different ways that the residents of Rindavan and any jivas who use the word Radha the way that this manifests their divinity makes us see and feel and interact with their divinity, with the Radha in them. So every time the residents of Vrindavan, because that's the example that Babaji uses so much, every time they use the word Radha, Radha Radha for this, Radha Radha for that, she is there. There's a presence, there's a connection between our souls, Radha in our souls, and Radha in the universe. She's conjured up. She's there, but still bigger than us. She's there in our soul, and she's there in our bodies. And she's there in our soul and our bodies so that we can pay service to her, do devotion to her. And how do we do devotion to Radha? by doing service to all living beings. By, by going to work and helping people at work, by raising our children, by loving our partner, by making food, by, by doing simple seva, by washing, all these things are doing, uh, giving devotion to Radha, giving honor and praise um, to Radha. And the, the way we use the word in our, we say it through our bodies, we feel it in our mouths, lets us in a way taste it and relish it. It's a beautiful feeling to have in the mouth, to say Radha. Just like we often hear that the, the Maha Mantra is just a wonderful feeling, physical feeling to, to say and to chant in our bodies. So whenever we chant, whenever we say the word Radha, She's there. When I say, when I meet someone on the street in Vrindavan, I say, Rade, Rade. And it's because I, I see in that other person, in the eyes of that other person, Radha. She's there. And that person sees her in me. So saying Radha, saying the name, the holy name of Radha, is a way of connecting all the souls that are Radha, that are in Radha, that are connected through the divine love, the Prem, the Prem Shakti of Radha. She is there in us. When we say our name, her name, she grows in our hearts. She grow, we come closer to our, to our Svarup, to our spiritual identity, because she is there. She is the one who makes it up. We come closer to our, our constitutional position. We come closer to who we are. So saying Radha, saying the holy name, means coming closer, just a little bit closer to the, the divine in us, in our material existence. It's a reminder and an expression of the love, of the prem, the little bit of divine love that's inside of us all, and which we express in every little act we do, and which we want to make grow and express more, more deeply, more clearly. 
So in, we always say we must increase our spiritual senses, we must increase our love. And we always say that love in the universe grows. This all happens by connecting the Radha in our soul, the incomplete, imperfect Radha in our soul, with the perfect and complete Radha, who is the goddess of love. Our souls are part and parcel of the soul of God. Radha Rani is part and parcel of who we are. So this is really the recipe. This is the this is the guidebook for deepening spiritual experience. It's becoming more aware of the love that's in us, more aware that the Radha is there. And the more we become aware of it, the more we dust off our hearts, the more we polish the mirror of our souls, the more she's right there. It's not a, it's not a question of inviting her in because she's out in the meadow playing around somewhere. It's, it's, a, it's a question of cleaning off our own soul so that she can become more pure in us. So every time we say Radha, it's like saying, I want to be closer to Radha. And when I say to you on the street, Radha, Radha, hello, how do you do? It's a way, in, a way of saying, I want to be closer to Radha in you. I see the divine in you, and I want it to be closer to it. And when I'm closer to the Radha in you, you become closer to the Radha in me, and we're both growing. So the very energy that makes your breath come out of your body is Radha Shakti. This is the energy of Radha, the energy of Radha's love. Everything we do with our bodies comes from this energy. That we put one foot on the floor in the morning, especially when the floor is cold, and we get up, this is Radha's energy, Radha Shakti, pushing us, lifting us, making us better, making us bigger, making us more loving. When we go to work, when we clean our house, all these things, it's Radha Shakti. And the reason we do these things, all these things, from putting the feet on the ground to cooking the breakfast to going to work, we do this for the pleasure of God. All this energy has one goal. All the energy of our work, all the energy of our uh, bodily movements, the energy of our voice when we say Radha, it has one goal and that is to increase the pleasure of God. This is the dimension of Ladani Shakti the energy that gives pleasure to, to, to God and to the spiritual part of all beings. All the actions we do are essentially targeted at increasing the pleasure, increasing the happiness of others. And when we increase the happiness of others, we increase the happiness of God. And that is the goal of life. To realize our spiritual identity, to realize that we are lovers of the divine, and to increase that love. Some people would say that there's kind of a conflict between ego and love. So we have selfish acts, egoistical acts, we think only of ourselves, or we think selflessly, we think only of other people. But I believe that Inside every egoistical act, there is hiding a loving, selfless soul that wants to be egoless. Every egoistical act is hiding a soul that doesn't want to be egoistical. But in every egoistical act, there's a form of suffering, which is blocking that more pure, selfless soul within. And our task has to be to clean off that blockage. And even in the most egoistical act, we can then find the pure, selfless, spiritual love within. And what's important is that we can help each other to do this. By not meeting egoistical acts with other egoistical acts. 
by, by meeting egoism with tenderness, with generosity and compassion. And this is what any act of generosity in the face of a cruel egoism is always an act that blows the dust off the egoistical heart and cleans it and purifies it. So I think every bit of energy in us is at its base, prema, is it's at its base, selfless love of God. But the, the energy gets blocked, it gets mixed up, it gets dirtied. And then our task in life, in everyday life, is to clean it off, to purify it, to make it such that, to make it such that we can find our way to the more pure expression of relations. So, just running out of battery there. All right, let's go back to Babaji then. He says the following, the blessed author, Narottam Das Takaji, uh, Tak Takura Mahashaya, now reveals the glory of Sri Radha's holy name by saying, Jaya Jaya Radha Nama, glory, glory to the holy name of Radha. And he focuses a bit on the glory more than I did just now. And glory is, of course, something that goes beyond itself, transcendence. When we think of the glory of the name, we think of how great it is. We think of how it's bigger than what we see. And this is an inspiration to us that we can be bigger than what we see ourselves to be. So the glory that uh, Babaji is talking about is the beauty of the name, which is also in our hearts. It's the power of the name, which is in our house and hearts and and and, 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 and unused or too little used. It's the work we can do with this love, this plan which lies in the, the name Radha. It's the way we can imagine changing our lives or changing the world around us. So for Babaji, Narottam is revealing how Radha and the name of Radha is greater than what we experience in our material lives. The glory of Radha, the name of Radha, the glory of the name of Radha, is a reference to something beyond, something bigger. Yes, we can say Radha, but when we say the name and contemplate the name, then we're thinking about a Radha which is divine, greater than us, and to which we can reach. So the name of Radha for Babaji is the energy of Radha, always growing, always expanding. And like I said before, Narottam Tastakur is focusing always on what it means to realize love. And that's essentially what's going on all the way through the, the poem, Prima Bhakti Chandrika. It's, it's, an ex, and it's an attempt to express that love, to show the different ways that that love can come out. And we find that, we feel that by reading the beauty of the verses. And so, ironically or paradoxically, it's the love in the verse which makes us understand the love in our lives. So Babaji then says the word jaya indicates superiority and a kind of obeisance. Why is Sri Radha's holy name so glorious and superior? Babaji has. And once again, it's because when we speak it, we put it out from ourselves, we project it outward. We give it to others and we give it to the world. And it's a way of reaching to something greater than what we are. If we were silent about it, nothing would change. If we kept it outside of our thoughts, nothing would change. But the fact that we share it with other devotees, with other jivas, is a way for it to become greater than itself. And this is the secret of Samkirtan as well. The whole goal of Samkirtan is to project outward the love that we feel, that we devotees feel, 
to sing it and let others see our excitement, let others see our devotion, let others be touched by the love. This is how love passes. Love is only meaningful when it passes, when it passes from one to another, from one set of eyes to another, from one smile to another, from one uh, act to another, from one song to another. It's through this expression that love grows. And this is the secret of Radharani as well. Before Mahaprabhu, Krishna was the ocean of love that could not love, the ocean of love that did not know itself as a lover. And when Mahaprabhu took the mood of Radha as the lover, of the, as a loving energy, then we had a chance to experience love as loving. Not just a kind of love as an idea, but love as actual loving. And this is what happens when we speak, when we sing, and when we chant. Then um, Papaji cites Radha Rasa Sudaniti. Prabhupada Saraswati, he says, has written, May the two wonderful syllables, Ra, Da, that immediately attract the Lord of Gokula, Sri Krishna, after even one single utterance that makes all the goals of human life seem futile when love is developed for it, and that mark the mantra that is lovingly repeated by Lord Madhava and even by Sri Krishna, always be manifest on my tongue. So good, he says, Prabhupada Prabhu, uh, Dananda says, we should always manifest, we should always sing this word, we should always speak this word. But what happens when we speak it? That's what's so uh, extraordinary in this verse from Rasa Sutaniti. It attracts God. So what is the virtue of Radha? It's that she's capable of attracting Krishna himself. The power of Radha, Radha's energy, is the power of pleasing Krishna, of attracting Krishna, of, of uh, increasing desire, Krishna's desire for her. So every time that we're using this word, we're also contributing to the increasing attraction of Krishna in our own tiny little way. The more we feel the word Radha, the more that attracting force is uh, um, is uh, released into the world, into life, into the exchange between other, with other human beings, and the more the love of uh, Krishna grows. So, Prabhupada Saraswati Pad underscores the way that even the material pleasure that we have in saying this word creates a divine pleasure for Radha. And this is because Radha connects to two things, connects to us in two ways, Radha. It's the name of our soul. Our soul is love. Our spiritual identity is servant of Radha. Love for Radha, loving support, loving service, devotional service of Radha. And the Radha is the name of God as well. So the greatest, most beautiful connection is the one between our soul and the soul of God, or between our soul and God. Saying Radha says, a little bit of my heart is Radha, and it's connecting with Radha, the goddess of love. Um, Babaji then also comments on, on the Radha Rasa Sutaniti by saying that the name Radha makes the four goals of life seem trivial. The four goals in Kali Yoga, you remember, are Dharma, Artha, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Natural law, work and wealth, achievement of material desires and uh, liberation, moksha, liberation. But Radha defeats these, makes these seem small. 
make these seem trivial. Because all of these goals in life, these four goals, are limited to the body, limited to our small material existence. Whereas the word Radha lets us transcend, lets us have visions of Radha, lets, lets us connect the Radha inside of us with the Radha um, who is the goddess of love. To serve Radha means to become ourselves as servants, as Manjari. It's to transcend this material being and become the servants of the goddess of love that we authentically are. So to serve Radha is to be ourselves, is to become who we are in our Svarup, to become our spiritual identity. To serve Radha is to live in our soul identity. To serve Radha is to, to understand by living in and feeling divine love, the divine love that's coming from ourselves. And if we can imagine the perfection of our relation to our soul, our svarup, our spiritual form, then this would be something very close to direct service as mandaris to Radha. Babaji continues saying, the holy name of Radha is a mantra that most attracts Vrajendrandana, so Krishna, the son of Nanda, the son of Nanda, who is himself the original personality of Godhead and most worshipable in the entire universe. That is what makes the holy name of Radha so glorious and superior. So this is Babaji speaking, but he's using this language of Prabhupada, isn't he, the original personality of Godhead. And what's important about it is that it understands God as personal, God as something with character, and God, most importantly, as, as something that has an individual relation with our soul. So when Radha, the name of Radha is said in a mantra, or in any form really, what is happening is that it's giving pleasure to, to Krishna. And in giving pleasure to Krishna, it's increasing our personal relationship to Krishna, our personal relationship to, to our soul, and it's increasing the purity of our, of our soul, of our, our spiritual identity. The glorification of Radha, in other words, increases our love. And it increases her love as well. It increases the admiration she can feel for Krishna. It increases the admiration that she feels for, that, that she feels she has to give. It increases her plim. The more we chant, the more we realize that we are made of a part of Radha, the more that we can understand that the universe is fundally, fund fundamentally made of love and loving relation. The more we chant Radha, the more we glorify the holy name of Radha, the more that Krishna can realize himself because he receives the love that he requires from Radha. Remember that Krishna is a slave, a servant to the love of Radha. The more love he gets from Radha, the greater he becomes as well. Even if Krishna is the creator of all love in the universe, it's Radha who makes that work by giving the energy that, that helps transfer the love from one jiva to another. Krishna is love, but Radha is the one that makes us feel love, that makes us live love, makes love lived. It's Radha who brings it to life through her Shakti, through her Ladani Shakti, through her Prema Shakti. So we can admire the splendid, perfect love that Krishna has made us, but what good does it do it if, if we can't live that love? 
this is not only the wonderful gift of Mahaprabhu to us, but it's the the genius of Mahaprabhu which saves Krishna from a very a very lifeless voyage into eternity as someone who is love but does not know love. So the glory of Mahaprabhu Krishna can both be someone who is love and who knows what it is to love. And by the, to by the same virtue, we adopt that gift ourselves. We know God by being lovers. When we love each other, when we love our children, when we love others, we are loving God in a way which was not possible in the time before Mahaprabhu, when love was just a sterile concept, just a nice, beautiful idea. Um, then Prabhupada cites the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, and he says, if anyone pronounces the syllable Ra, then Sri Madhava, Krishna, gets up to approach him, blossoming with joy. And when someone also pronounces the syllable Dha, he promptly runs after the pronouncer with respect. So you only have to get halfway through Ra, Dha, and Krishna is on his feet and running. Just start with Ra, and he's excited, he's up, he's happy, and then you come to Dha, and he He's sprinting towards the love that the Radha can give. Once again, by chanting the word Radha, we increase the reach, the power of Radha to give that love, that the, the power of Krishna to experience loving through the, the Vrajvila. Then the second part of the verse, and I'm keeping an eye on the time, I know we're, we have just one hour. The second part of the verse concerns the abode of Radha, the home of Radha, where Radha lives. So the verse says, Vrindavana Yara Dharma. So this name of Radha that resides in Vrindavan, or whose abode is in Vrindavan. So Vrindavan Dhar Dham is the abode of Radha, of the name of Radha. Vrindavan Dam is the place where Radha, Radha's name lives. And so Prabhupada, sorry, um, an old habit, uh, Babaji says, Sri Radharani's most sweet playgrounds, most sweet playgrounds is Vrindavan, Sri Vrindavan. The ever so sweet abode of Sri Radha name. Knowing, Babaji continues, knowing it is the mantra that mostly attracts Sri Krishna, the people of Sri Vrindavan see it as the object of their worship. So not only is it a wonderful, sweet place for Radha, because that's where Radha's name lives, but the inhabitants of Vrindavan worship it because they know that it helps to attract the pleasure of Krishna. But let's be careful. We're talking not about Vrindavan, the geographical place. We're talking about Vrindavan Dam. We're talking about Vrindavan, the spiritual place. So it's not the village or the town hall. It's not Madura Road. It's not the gathering of material beings. A Dam is a spiritual place, right? It's a gathering of souls, gathering, gathering of spiritual, immaterial beings. And so Vrindavan Dam is a center of attraction for spiritual love, for spiritual pleasure in the name of Radha, and for the practicing of that spiritual pleasure, that spiritual love uh, in the name of Radha. So all of you who are gathered here today in this class, are more or less in Vrindavan Dham, wherever you are. That's the glory of our association. Jai Ho! <laughs> Vrindavan Dham is not a place, it's a focus of your energy. And I see your faces and I can see the focus. It's the, 
It's a spiritual gravi- point of gravitation for your hearts. It's a spiritual center of attraction. It attracts your hearts. You feel a drawing towards this spiritual place. It's the center, if you could think of a, a sort of a center of planets, it's a place where the energy of love, of prema, is attracted. And it's a place, maybe even more importantly, where there's connection, where spiritual energy is shared, like right now between us in this class, but also between you and those others you have to do within your daily lives. The modern soul is homeless. In modernity, we're very lonely. But in Adam, a spiritual home, we have full life of relation with countless other souls. So what the the challenge for us in for this verse, the realization we need to try to have, is the nature of this connection between the material word, Radha, our use of it in talking, in speaking, in chanting, in singing, in praying, and the spiritual body, the material and the spiritual body. Part of you is speaking with your lungs and your vocal cords, the word Radha, and part of it is realizing it in your heart, the little bit of God that's in your hearts, growing and growing, the more you glorify the word. So they're both happening in each of us. A material experience of the word, of feeling it in our mouth, in our lips, of hearing the music, and feeling it grow in our hearts as we become deeper and deeper in relation. So Babaji says, the holy name of Sri Radha is to be chanted, to be practiced in Japa, to be heard, and to be remembered. So these are all the stages of, of we, what we call relishing. Relish, to relish. This is the, this beautiful word, word in, in English, to relish. To relish means to feel the relation between a material pleasure and spiritual pleasure. To relish isn't just to smell a flower and say, oh, that's a nice fragrance. That would be pleasure. To relish is to smell of the fragrance of a flower and smell the fragrance of God in the flower. Maybe just a little bit, maybe a lot. This is relishing. Relishing is saying, ah, I feel pleasure and there's something more in my pleasure. There's something greater and something deeper. And the more we focus on that connection between what we smell in our silly little noses and what we feel in our huge spiritual souls, the more we meditate on that, the more that spiritual sensation will grow. The more we see and smell God in every flower, to the point where someone who's realized smells only God. There's only the fragrance of Vrindavanam. There's only the taste of spiritual food in Prasharam. There's only the sound of spiritual singing in all music. It's not that sadhus are teleported into another planet from where they stand. It's that they look around and they see and they smell and they hear the divine. And that's where we're all going, slowly, slowly. The more we come close to our hearts, to our souls, the more we see and smell and taste the divine around us. And this happens, Babaji is saying, through chanting, through, through singing, through japa, through hearing. Each time we caress the little bead in our japa mala, we're caressing our soul. So do it with care. Do it with intensity. Do it with uh, tenderness. Every bead you touch in your japa mala, This is your soul softening. 
every devotional practice you have that you see materially, that you do with your material body, do it intensely, tenderly, and with spiritual engagements, and it will become more and more spiritual. This is the message of Babaji when he says that these things need to be heard and to be remembered. The holy name, he says, Babaji, the holy name of Radha is the mouth in the mouth of everyone in Vrindavan. That means you too. He means Vrindavan Dham. People call each other with Sri Radha's name, respectfully speak with each other, buy and sell things, and use it in all dealings. And it's true if you now materially, if you, materially, if you come to Vrindavan, you you buy a you buy a bottle of water and you say rade rade and the seller says rade rade. It's the word on everyone's lips, but the meaning of it is the connection, the connection, weak or strong, that you have with the soul of the person you're doing a transaction with. It's the energy that's passed. When you say rade 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 to a water seller on the street. You may think it's indifference, but you're giving a little bit of Radha Shakti to that water center. And if he or she looks back at you, she gives it back to you as well. So whenever there's action, any action, lifting a finger, the raising a hand, there's a passage of energy. And where there's a passage of energy, there's a passage of Radha Shakti, Radha's energy. She's everywhere in everything. Any energy you exert is the energy of your soul. It's the energy of your humanity. It's the energy of your heart. And Babaji goes on, he says, Shri Yadanama is written on the walls of the houses and even on the trees. It is said that when the famous poet Shri Tulasi Das, the author of Shri Rama Charita Mana, Manasha, came to Sri Vrindavan, he was astonished to hear Sri Radhanam every, from everyone's mouths. And so remembering Ayodhya, the abode of Sri Ramachandra, he thought the holy name of Rama is on everyone's mouth in Ayodhya. No one chants the name of Sita, although the, name, the names Satarama are heard there sometimes. So Babaji says the special thing about Shri Vrindavan is that everyone just chants Radhanam in all their dealings. Jaya Jaya Radhanama Vrindavan Yaradama. And then he tells a sweet story that we'll finish on today. He says, one day a Bengali lady came to see Shri Vrindavan, and her name was Radha. When she came off the road and heard the people of Vrindavan addressing and calling each other with Jaya Radha, Jaya Radha, she looked in that direction in a startled way. Is anybody calling her, she thought. Later, she could understand that here all women and men, everyone addresses everyone else with Radhe, Radhe. And everyone uses Radha, Dhamma in all activities and in all discussions. One day, she asked a Mahatma for the reason for this. And the Vaishnava told her, and the, this answer is wonderful, following. He said, is there a place anywhere on earth where it is a rule to first pronounce the sweet topic and later all the other topics? So when you first say Radha, when you say Radhe Radhe on the street or to another devotee or to anyone, you're first saying the most sweetest thing about the whole world. You're describing the world and saying the world is a sweet and beautiful place. And then you can talk about the bottle of water you want to buy or about the tuk-tuk that you want to take. First thing you say is the world is full of love. Radhe Radhe. So... If someone rebukes someone else, this, this Mahatma said to the lady, if someone attacks or criticizes someone else, he will still first pronounce the sweet words and then, and only then rebuke. 
So first he'll say, the world is full of love, my dear lady. And then she says, now give me more money for my water or, or whatever the problem is. So first the world is full of love and then the tiny little trivial material problem which is inside the world full of love. And the Mahatma goes on, but Indavan is such a place. Here there is no sweeter thing than Radhanam. Hence, here everyone first tells everyone else the name of Radha before saying anything else or doing anything else. So when you say Radhe Radhe to your husband next time, you are saying, I love God and the world. Hello. <laughs> I love God and the world and you are in it. Hello. So Babaji says, truly there is nothing sweeter in the whole universe than this holy name of Radha. And then even cites, and we'll stop here, uh, Raghunath Goswami, who says, the holy name of Radha is fresh and beautiful nectar. And Babaji says, hence the residents of Vrindavan love Radha more than their lives. So that's what you're saying. When you say Radhe Radhe, you're saying, I love you and God more than my life. Now, what can I do for you? <laughs> jaya Jaya Radhanam Vrindavana Yara Dhamma. Jaya Shri Radhe. Now we'll leave over to Sundarambaya for nice kirtan. And we'll continue with this verse and the next verse next time, my dear friends. Thank you so much, Urava. Radhe, Radhe, Sri Devi. Thank you, Urava Ji. Radhe, Radhe, Gurudev. Jai, Gurudev. Jai, Radhe.